I might I did like two and a half grams of shrooms too. So oh, you got you supposed to be happy you were sitting there with kid. Yeah, like the 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 uh, talking it maybe. Oh yeah, just talking to it. either way you want to do it. Okay. Rocking a Romy, a full boy, sorry, full boy Marley in the building. Tongue twister there. Uh, what's going on with you? What up, though? What's going on? You were just saying earlier a child in Atlanta. Yeah. What, what, what's up? Uh, man, doing a lot of songwriting for real. Yeah. I'm trying to get my feet wet in that. Are you originally from Detroit? Yeah. Okay. What's what made up? you switch from Detroit to Atlanta? Um, I just felt like I did what I did here. You know, it was just time for a transition. Um, I was going through a lot of depression here you know what i say i just wanted to get away and find myself more you think it was like the city or the music scene like what made you depressed um it was everything music women me just not knowing who i was you know yeah you've uh you've done some songwriting for some artists man um would you call yourself a ghostwriter yeah i really don't um tell people who i write for out of respect that's why I call myself a ghostwriter. But I've I've written for like damn near any any top female Detroit rapper or the bad women in Detroit, whatever. Like you know, I've I've written for them, uh, got good relationships with them, and um, that's why I really don't say no names because I just want everybody to shine, you know. Now we're talking about some of the top Detroit female artists in Detroit. You write songs for? Yeah, I don't write songs for. I've written for. Oh, just written parts for them. Yeah. And so, how do they know that you're the one to contact for ghostwriting and to get these hits off for them? It just it just happens. Like people already know me in the city. You feel me? So I don't know how it happens. It just happens. Like I just get calls, yeah. like out of nowhere. Like I don't I don't never like really be in the mist and be around for. Real. I just get called. For one of the songs that you've written for, what was the most views that you've seen or streams you've seen for a song you've written for? Um, I don't even honestly, bro. I don't even keep track or even care about that stuff. I mean, that's cool, but we want to know, man. As far as views are concerned, the streams. How much did you did you ever look at one and see maybe like, damn, that song took off? Um, no, cause, um, well, one of them. Oh, I should just say some names. No names, just streams. <laughs> we're not seeing names. We're just on streams right now. Nah. Um, did you break a million? Nah. Oh, you never broke them? No, no. Okay. But that's that's something that I I, I want to do. You know what I'm saying? But if I don't, I don't really, I don't really. No, do you get do you get compensated as a ghostwriter? Yeah, um, I get upfront money and I get percentages. Sure. Talk about uh, growing up in Detroit and how that led into your music career. Uh, really, just just being able to see everything. Like I I moved to the suburbs as well. So being able to be diverse and see everything, it led to a whole lot. I was able to, you know, show the city, show my block, show my friends more. You know what I'm saying? And um, through my music, I was able to lead. I was able to 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 maneuver and show people it's more than just the block, more than just, you know what I'm saying, hustling and this and that, you know. What year did you roughly begin your music career? Shoot, I started, I would say for real, for real, like 2015, like for real, for real. But like I've been, I've been making music, bro, since like third grade. Like I wrote my first rap in third grade. When you started breaking into the scene in 2015, um, what were you seeing around you? What was kind of like the relevant trends in music? Because this is kind of like, this is before I first stay out. This is kind of like a weird time for Detroit music, right? Yeah. It's like in the middle ground of people pushing it forward, but not really finding a hit yet until first day out had popped. I think around that time, it was like, you know, Doughboys and um, really was, what they was um, getting signed with Jeezy around there, mm. I think. And uh, Team Eastside, they, they was popping, right, around that time. But I'm, I'm so bad with time. Like, I don't, I just be living. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talk about your career a little bit, man. Talk about the progression and the timeline of your music career in Detroit and how that led to Atlanta. Um, well, really, I um, I was signed to a label and... Um, you were signed to Sony, right? Well, I was signed to, I was signed with BMB. Hmm. 
and then I through B and B I got signed with Sony. So I was signed to two two labels at the same time and it kinda messed me up in a way, you know what I'm saying? Because the labels they didn't really see eye to eye, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't and it wasn't no problem. It wasn't like no big problem or nothing like that, you know. Um but I got out of everything good, clear, you know what I'm saying? And um after getting out of all of those situations, bro, out of all those label deals, I started realizing like I didn't really I didn't really know much. Like I was just kinda like living and just going with the flow. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really know the business, you know. I didn't I didn't know much. And um I saw like I saw people from the city like for who they were after I left the label, you know what I'm saying? People really just start, was re really only messing with me because I was on that label and, or because I was close to certain people and, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just, it was weird. So that's why I just started, I was like, man, I gotta go, bro. Like, I don't know who or what because money getting to play. Like, I was with a label, so it was a lot of money, you know what I'm saying, behind me. So when that got took, when they see, like, that's not, there no more you know what i'm saying i start seeing people for who they were you feel me and it just got real from that point you know i'm like okay and i just sat back and i just started examining for what made um bnb take you under and then how did that convert to sony like what were you showing them that made them go like all right you, this guy's the one uh well i started i'm like i started with bnb like i'm original bnb artist like when everything started like i started with them it was um charlie baltimore um, she the one who really helped me and like, you know, told me to like to rock with them. You know what I'm saying? And um, I was already I already wanted to rock with them, but Charlie was the one who really put the word in for me. Then I uh, trick trick, he came and he he loved me, so you know he stamped me, and so it was uh that's how that started. What what part of your music was it though that stood out to them? Like, do you remember what oh, songs? Oh, the melodies. The melodies. Um, I didn't have no. I didn't have no song going right now. But uh, at the time, I was just. I just. They could see that I was musically inclined. You know what I'm saying. And so I you was, didn't have any music out, but you got signed. No, I had. I had music out. I was, but I didn't have no like single that was like going. You feel me? And then when I got with them, kind of like in the midst of everything, that's when Fool Boy Oh Boy was coming. Like, but I had Fool Boy Oh Boy before them. You know what I'm saying? But it was like all in the midst. I didn't just get signed right off the rip. Like I was just kind of hanging with them, being around, you know what I'm saying? But I'm still doing me type vibe. So it just all happened kind of like at once. Like, was there a group of other people that were being selected as well when it came to Trick Trick? Or was it kind of primarily you, like they picked you out of the bunch? No, nah, it was it was me, Cash Pay, uh, Charlie Baltimore, Trick Trick, and uh, Air Street. Yeah, it was us. What was it like being able to communicate with Trick Trick and have that relationship? Uh, that was beautiful. Uh, I really felt honored, to be real. Um, you know, just growing up and hearing, growing up and hearing, you know, different things about him and everything, but really being around him and being able to see how he moved. I mean, what people know about him and hear about him, like, yeah, that's cool and all, but he's actually, like, a very, like, great, talented like man like you know what i'm saying and he 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 moves like with with honor you know and respect and it's it's a beautiful it was beautiful to really see going state to state seeing him maneuver and him connect with everybody and everything so i i was able to learn and um know how to move you know when you said you were getting, you know, these opportunities and, you know, it's kind of stardom's kind of coming and you're seeing the people around you kind of gravitate towards you in a certain way that's uncomfortable for you. And then what happens to the point where it disappears, where these opportunities disappear? Like what made you not continue with these um, labels? Um, shout out Peanut, man. Peanut, um... We start. He st he started this from the ground up. He didn't he didn't know about the music business like that, you know what I'm saying? And he had to trust people. He had to go in here trusting people. And what happened was, uh, people just fucked him over basically. You know what I'm saying? Like doing bad business, and 
it's really making him look bad, but he not the one who really doing it. Like, he has good intentions, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's the people. So it was the people who that he was hiring that I was really, you know what I'm saying, that was conflicting everything and things was going on. And I just, man, I'm a person, like, I'm just at peace. Like, I don't want all that. I'm just not with all that, you know? So it just came to a point. It wasn't, wasn't like I'm about to here or you got to go or nothing like that. It was just all love. Like, to this day, it's all love. Like, me and Nut talk whenever we talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can call him right now. He going to answer. You know, he always answer for me. With Sony, too, like, it was the same kind of situation where it's just like, okay. Yeah, they was... They was just like, man, we ain't got no problem with you. You know what I'm saying? We just, we can't move forward because of, you know what I'm saying? Things Sorry. ain't, you know what I'm saying? They ain't give me everything, every detail. But again, man, the type of person I am and how I was living at that moment, I didn't even care, bro. <laughs> I was really just enjoying that I could create and that it was just, I was in the atmosphere of things and that I, I felt like, you know, I was getting to where I I wanted to go so that I can take care of the people I want to take care of and and provide and and, and make a change in this world with, with my artistry. That's all I cared about. I didn't, when things, as long as I was with BMB, I didn't care about Sony or nothing. Like, that was my family. That's who I started with. It didn't, it didn't really matter. I don't, you know, no. tripping. Talk about the progression of your career from that point after, you know, you leave these labels and stuff behind. Um, where did, what was your next moves? finding myself mm. it wasn't even like you know i would try to do music but more and more the universe would just pull me back to myself bro so that's when i started doing inner work you know what i'm saying um but i had i had open heart surgery too so that's what kind of messed me over too you know i couldn't move around i couldn't do nothing so i really had to sit down and be with self you know yeah, the the uh, concept of not even a concept, but the reality of paying attention to yourself before you pay attention to the external, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the only way to function properly in this reality we have here is to be internally well, or else you can't navigate properly. You see a lot of people with like this internal damage and turbulence, and then they try to like start a rap career or whatever career they want to start. And it never manifests because they have too much inner turbulence, right? So for you, you're like, let me take a break. Let me like focus on myself. Yeah, every every artist should every artist should really try to find themselves. It's a lot of artists right now because they don't know who they are. People just trying to be an artist. Well, the argument like, is this, right? So mm -hmm. when you're talking about doing inner work, I personally believe that a lot of artists are unstable. Just they're just they grew up unstable for whatever reason but that's what created the best content because their emotions really shine right for example like Eminem when he wrote all of his music in his early Marshall Mathers LP he's talking about his family he's talking about Hollywood he's talking about all the things that are affecting him and he's able to put that onto his music and people can relate to it or gravitate to it because there's so much raw energy and emotion in it. Yeah, now, I, if Eminem had balanced himself before he put out that music, maybe he would have been like, hey, you know what, man? It's not that bad. Everything's all right. And then put out music that's subpar. Right? So that's the, the argument for like artists yeah, balancing themselves it. before they're getting involved in the industry. And I, I, I get that and I agree. Um, be raw, your emotions. But when you, when you feel like you're about to elevate, go to the next level, and this and that, come back in. It's going to happen. Whatever's for you, it's for you. It's going to happen, but don't get too geeked. That that moment you get geeked, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it because you, cause you're not centered. You're not balanced. So once you go out there, it's really over. You you in the hands of them, in the hands of, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you just going to be doing whatever. Once you get around that money, like real money, and like real opportunity, you're gonna literally do whatever it takes because you just want to get there. You know what I'm saying? That's where people lose themselves. And then before you know it, they're like, oh shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like when you feel when you feel like you're about to like you get that call or like, hey, we need you to, you know, don't get too excited. Yeah. Breathe. You know what I'm saying? Know what you're about to get yourself into. And, and and 
think about it, you know, meditate on it, you know? I think that's where the term fumbling the bag came from. Fumbling the bag came literally from that. Like, when you had everything in motion and then you find a way to screw it up because you're not balanced, that's what fumbling and the that, bag is. That was me. I wasn't balanced, bro. I can't, I could never sit here and put everything on a person or a label or whatever. It was really just me. That's all at the end of the day. You know, if I was, if I was balanced like, like I am now, I see I'm balanced and I know how to still get them raw emotions because I know how to go back and, re and remember things and, you know, but some people, of course, probably can't do that. Maybe. I don't know. But everything that I went through was for a reason and I and I appreciate it. I appreciate the fumble in the bag or whatever you want to call it. Like I don't even care. <laughs> like from your it. from from if you wrote it out on paper, what was available to you at that moment? Like specifically that was so like prominent that everybody knew what was happening. Like can you just lay it down real quick? Like what was the opportunity available that everybody was seeing that you had? Now you're with BMB. That's awesome. You're with, getting signed with Sony, but what's the bigger picture of it? Like, just being in the being in the mist, but I'm not. I'm not getting the push. I'm just in the mist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm just behind everybody. I'm learning. I'm you know I'm not getting that real push because it's all about numbers. It's all about I'm on a label with bigger artists, and so you know I, I understand that all the way. You know what I'm saying? They pulled me to the side and tell me, hey, we got to, you know. Okay, cool. I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I just, I don't know, like what was the most prominent you said? like. Yeah, like when people are looking at it, let's say, for instance, who is signed to Sony? Did you get to meet anybody from Sony? Were people seeing you acquainted with certain people besides, like, obviously Peanuts established? Um, but, like, did people see you with somebody and go, like, what the fuck? Like, that's crazy that you're, that you're doing that. I mean, they saw me in the Sony buildings. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, I was with, uh, what's his name? Shadow. He's a very well-known person in there. Um, they just saw me at these different things, like... Um, with DJ Envy and you know um, all these big I don't I forgot all the names because I'm so out of it now I'm out yeah. the loop like but all these names they saw me going here here and there and then once all of that was gone you know it's just like dang like where what happened or you know what I'm saying but you gotta understand in the music industry too a lot of that a lot of that stuff is bought bro a lot of that, a lot of things is about money you know what I'm saying so what people were seeing was just money for real. You know what I'm saying? And when that all that just, I lost all that, I didn't have all that. Now people's perception of me is like, you know, like, oh, he fell off or he ran. It was like, no, I'm, I'm the same. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nothing happened. I still make great music. I'm, I'm still doing the same. It's just that I'm not, I can't have access to all these doors like I, like I once could. You know what I mean? Right. And so... What's the continuity of that point from leaving the labels to now? Like, what were you doing? Like, you're finding yourself, you're figuring yourself out, you're balancing yourself. Mm -hmm. What were the next courses? Um, songwriting. I got into songwriting because I didn't want to be in in the front like that no more. You know what I'm saying? And I realized the the money was good. You know what I'm saying? And I could just be at home. That's cool. You know what I'm saying, and um, I could still be in them doors. I could, I can get into doors a little easier because now I'm not like, hey, I rap. You know, it's like, no, I got something for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then they realize I rap, but I don't even be really like trying to be with labels like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna know what's for me when it's for me when it comes to me. You know what I'm saying? Right on. Um, talk about where you're at as far as what you want to provide to people now uh balance and harmony um independence um you know of course i of course i need help i can't do it by myself you know what i mean right um but perseverance prosperity that's what i want to show to people you know what i'm saying that everything is is within you know all this other stuff is just extra, right. you know, and it's and it's beautiful. The numbers, the clothes, the 
you know. But I want to show people who they are without all that, yeah. you know. Um, of course, I need to get myself in, on a bigger platforms and, you know, to really show that. And uh, I'm, I'm working on that. But that all that all comes with time and just patience. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of it, you know. Yeah, the the people who are. Um the people who really pay attention to who they are as people always find conflict with the music scene because I'm very self-aware and I'm very conscious of who I am and where I want to go. Mm -hmm. And then naturally I want to be in the entertainment industry, but there's conflicts between spirituality and music and entertainment. Right. Mm -hmm. And for people that don't understand spirituality, it's not about ghosts or religion. It's really just about yourself as a yeah. person, as a living being. Right. And you're navigating through the entertainment scene, which is a lot of facades and lies and fakeness in it. And that's where a lot of the conflict happens. It's like, man, I'm trying to live like a genuine life. And there's a lot of stuff in the music scene that's not genuine. And so you go back and forth in your mind between like, damn, man, being a part of it, not being a part of it, like fit being a part of it to this degree, but not to that degree. It's a very difficult situation when you are spiritual as well as in the entertainment industry and in with rap in particular it's very difficult yes yeah, it's, it's extra difficult um but i think the beauty about it all is is that it just is it just is what it is and you just have to be and just love it um i think me coming from the city i come from and me being in the position i am and the artist that i am i think i have the ability to to show people how to just just be and be grateful, you know. Um, and when you're navigating through this this industry, just understand that you can't take everything like like to heart, you know what I'm saying? These relationships, is a lot of it is fake. A lot of it is made up because people want money. At the end of the day, that's everybody's goal. It's like, bro, I, got, I need some money. I need to get rich. I need to pay my kids so if you go and go in there with the mindset of that of just knowing that alone i think you you would be better off than going there and just being one of them people who just like yeah i want some money too you know what i'm saying like yeah let's get some money you know um but yeah consciousness man and being balanced is probably the, the best thing but it's hard being in this in this music industry i don't even know where to go right now I don't know where to navigate. I don't. It's hard for me to even sign to a label because of my loyalty. You know what I'm saying? All that I've been through with labels. You know what I'm saying? It's like I still feel like I owe them. In a way, like they did. They did a lot for me that I couldn't have done. You know what I'm saying? Well, <clears throat> when a, a prominent artist from Detroit made a statement in a podcast recently, and he said that, you know. You can't expect anybody to not do what puts them in a better position because everybody else is going to try to find a way to put themselves in a better position. So loyalty and all that stuff, like, yeah, you want to stick to it, you want to do it, but at the end of the day, would that person that you're being loyal to do the same thing for you? Would the no, person right. that I'm being loyal to do the same thing for me? Right. But then it comes down to your own character. Well, even if he's not going to, like, for real, like, even if you're going to do something to me that's snaky... I'm not going to do something back to you that's sneaky because I'm not a sneaky person, right? Period. But other people might look at that and go like, you know what? I'm going I'm to play it how you play it. But you know what? That means you're going out of your character because of what somebody else is doing. That makes you not genuine anymore. Facts. Right? At the end of the day. So True. for me, um, you know, it's interesting when we try to, when we say we're going to stay loyal to somebody and then somebody else is saying, well, you know, I'm only going to be as loyal as you are to me. It's just an interesting conversation yeah. to have. No, but like, what I meant by that statement is like that's how I was living mm. for a while, like just being like loyal to that to that label. Like I messed up a lot of opportunities, like going into situations. Mm -hmm. Like I would tell people about that, you know what I'm saying, and like tell them like you know I still feel like in so many words I still feel like I owe that label. So I think that threw a lot of business off, you know that I had because you know but. Yeah. Now, like, I go in with the mindset, like, man, it's just me, bro. And whoever out there who can can help me and it's, like, genuine and we can really sit down and, like, like talk about what we want to do and we're on one accord, then that's, that's beautiful. But if it's just all about money and just, like, hey, he's talented, cool, 
that's that's just whatever. Like I don't whatever. You just whatever. You right. know. I want a real plan. I want a real purpose in life. Like, yeah, we got, bro. We, like your platform is beautiful. Like you, you living out your purpose as we speak. I mean, I am too. You know what I'm saying? But this shit is beautiful. And what I want to do is like, it's like if you think about all the top, top five artists in every city, every urban city, whatever, and what they rap about, their message, and you know, it's not about taking that away. You know what I'm saying? Even though that's the biggest influence, that's what's getting into these houses, into these kids. It's not about taking that away. You can never stop the violence. You can never, it's not about that, but it's like we have to try to bring other people up that have a different message to, that can coexist with these guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and so the kids, they don't only just see that and just be like, that's what I got to be to be successful or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? We need to all coexist with each other. It's mm. not about dividing mm. each other up and it's saying. A, it, and that's always been my question: is like, where it's the, it's the consumers, right? At the end of the day, the people that are consuming the music, what do they want? Now, if they're being for you know, if they're being fed a, a more positive message, are they still going to consume the music as much as they are with this newer type of music, where it's more about you know the streets and kind of violence and kind of you know this kind of um wild style life style basically like do they want that you know you that's the question at the end of the day no really it's like it's not about what they want really we we create the narrative we're the creators you know what i'm saying so we do it we put it out there like we're doing now so we're putting out the 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 the, the struggles and hardships of our communities that's what we're putting out there we're putting out all the stuff that brings us down the trauma you know what i'm saying and we're accepting that you know so we need to just put other things out there it's not about what they want it's just about putting it out there that's it you just put things out in the universe because the moment you ask yourself well what do they want it's it's really because well I need some money, so what do they want? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's what it, go, it always goes back to money, you know. So we got to just start putting things out there, and, and I don't want to say change the narrative necessarily, you know. But just like I said, create balance and harmony, bro. Balance, balance. That's all. Like it's so many great artists out here in Detroit who probably never get the recognition, or because they are not of Detroit. They don't have that sound or that look or they don't come, whatever. But they're great. They have they have something to give, you know, and it don't have to necessarily be consciousness stuff. But it's just other other things. So, like, really, I challenge every t the top five artists in Detroit or at any city or whatever. I challenge y'all to y'all already invested a lot in y'all homies. And people who are like y'all and this and that, I challenge y'all to try to take on somebody who who has a different message than you. You know what I'm saying? I swear did it. He signed a uh, uh, an, another another girl who was a different color or whatever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he did it. I don't know what she's rapping about. I don't know her message or whatever. But it don't matter. He did it. Like do do something different. We all we. We always just want to, what it really is, I think a lot of people are scared, bro. A lot of people, a lot of these guys click up with different gangs and, you know what I'm saying, because they're really scared and they need that image, you know what I'm saying? So that's why they sign and roll with these guys, you know what I'm saying? They don't want to sign a person who rapping arm, some R&B, talking about love and this and that. It's like, nah, that ain't going to go good with this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it all it all plays, but at the end of the day, it's their life. It ain't for me to tell them no, I'll switch it up or this or that. I'm just putting this out to the universe. You know what I'm saying? Do you? You know? It would take a humongous shift for it to work because at the end of the day, <clears throat> there is a acceptance or decline declining of uh, or you decline artists, right? So like Detroit, the images and the sounds that come from the city, there's almost like a a massive like again acceptance or a rejection of those artists right so at detroit is this weird algorithm it's all people 
but it's like a system where you either get accepted or you don't get accepted, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you got people like a Dre Sconey, right, for instance, that's very, very talented, has his own look, has his own image, but it doesn't follow the Detroit trend style. Shut up, my boy Dre. Those people either get accepted or rejected by Detroit, and you haven't found anybody that's of that type of narrative or that type of style that's been accepted in Detroit yet. Yeah. And has but, really, really pivoted and platformed. Like, we just had Z on here, um, and he was one of the guys who said he was a part of the underground, and he made it in his own lane with, you know, Odd Future. So he figured it out with a different way, but it wasn't with Detroit pretty much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it, Detroit's just not accepting it. That's the whole point. The whole point is Detroit's not accepting the underground guys. They're just not doing it. Yeah, they're not. As a and collective. And then you, what do you say about it, though? It's like... If people aren't accepting a sound, it's up to them to accept the sound or not. Whether I swear Vessel puts on a guy that's indie or underground, it's about the people at the end of the day either accepting that sound or not accepting that sound. That, I mean, that's that, just the way I look at it. I don't know. It's a, you, you know what you're doing. We'll have to post it and see, and let somebody do it. But um, uh, damn, what was I about to say? But it's not about. It's again, it's not about changing what's going on you know what i'm saying we just want to add we want to like like you got a platform and you're doing it you're allowing different type of artists to come over here and, and spread this story that's just one little thing that we can do you know what i'm saying but it's like it's a lot of these guys who who won't give opportunity and just look the other way if it don't if it don't even look we just have to give that opportunity it's not about what will happen and, and just put it out that's a good point. We we so worried about the outcome. We don't even really truly know the outcome. We never really try to put it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just got to do it. Yeah, I agree. You know, start accepting more people who are, who are a little different because technically they're not different. They're really us. They come, we come from all the same thing. We all come from one, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um... What's been on your mind lately, man, as far as your own personal life is concerned or just handling your own life? Uh, what's been on my mind? Yeah. You're on mushrooms, aren't you, man? Yeah. That's crazy. What's yeah. the experience like right now? Uh, I'm chilling, for real. Um, Sounds like fun. Yeah, it's more like a conscious thing for me, though. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It just balances me out, connect with my, my spirit. Um that's one of the only drugs that I uh, kind of back that's uh, off the market that I, I back is mushrooms. I think microdosing could be super important for some people. I think that more and more people are going to start microdosing. And it's gonna, are. And it's going to be a regular thing. Yeah. Definitely. Some people need it, man. It's it's just the bottom line. It's like but some, I wouldn't call it a drug. I wouldn't call it a drug either. Oh, okay. You called it a drug. But I did because that's what it's known as. Oh, and, like, okay, yeah. if you're talking about the government status and whatever, but, like, for me, I don't consider marijuana or mushrooms a drug because Definitely. they're from the plant, they're from the earth, really, like, straight up from the earth. I think cocaine isn't, right? Cocaine's, like, made. Type. Is cocaine made or is that from the earth, too? They're all drugs. What? They're all of it. What is? Marijuana. They're drugs, but, like, they're from the earth, at least. Like, they're... Good drugs. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, they're called drugs, but they're from the earth, though. Still, like cocaine, heroin isn't from the earth, right? Like it wasn't, like doesn't grow up on its own. Poppy seeds. So do you could that's, just that's you, where opium's derived from. But yeah. you can just you could just eat poppy seeds and get fucked up. Uh, it's not. It is a pretty. It's been an ancient process. Like if you look at opium in like China and stuff, ancient opium smoking and stuff like that, that's been around for like thousands of years. But, like, heroin is just, like, an opiate that's been, like, derived and refined. It's, like, gasoline versus, like, raw crude oil or something like that. Well, that's my whole point. Yeah. You can just smoke fucking weed the second it grows. Yeah, weed's easy. And you can eat mushrooms when they grow. You don't have to do shit to them. Right? With heroin, you got to do all the shit. Cocaine, you that's have to do That's what makes it a drug. Yeah, that's, that's what makes it a drug. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I had to lay back and I was going wild, son. I, I had to settle down. I had to get a girlfriend and, uh, I had to lean back to balance myself out. Cause there was a point where I was, I was out there wild, son. I was, I was out there wild. I wasn't raw dugging, man, but I was out there running wild. Mm -hmm. I was a loose cannon. I had a, I had a method for not catching diseases. I had like a really good method. Mm -hmm. So I still, I mean, now I can't stick to it cause I got a girlfriend, but it was working out for me. Yeah, but I, I caught one. What'd you catch? Herpes. Which kind? HSV2. 
Which is that? Which which one? is that the more serious one where it's like a? It's it's no difference. That's the stigma that's you that you're when you're talking when you're saying that. Mm-hmm. That's the stigma when what? you say the more serious kind. People split it up. So that's why herpes is being spread right now because HSV one, which would be like cold sores and things like that that people don't take as serious, mm. is being spread it because it literally what you just said. You know what I'm saying? So. Damn, I'm just glad they, they caught that on camera. What? <laughs> nah, just this oh, me moment. Saying that? Yeah, just this moment. Yeah. 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 But uh um, What's yeah, it's V two do? Like how does it like affect you? It's genital. How does it affect you? Like what do you mean? It don't like like did it did it did it make your sex life decline a little bit? Like were women more like, damn, that's fucked up, or like how'd that work? I'm pretty sure they was, but that yeah. ain't my problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's their problem. They gotta deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the I, problem. I, I I put it out there, you know what I'm saying. My women, the women I deal with, they love me. You know, that's the only type of women that can be around me. Does protection stop the spreading of it or anything like that? It can, and um, uh, but herpes doesn't spread like everybody think. It don't just because you have sex with somebody who have herpes don't mean you're gonna get herpes. Like, that's not what that means. I've never given herpes to any woman that I've dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. You have to explain that to them before you, like, like before yeah, you I get Yeah, I disclose. So you have to explain to them that you have it, but also that they have a, like, how do you explain that they're not going to get it? What do you mean? It's not necessarily that they're not going to get it. It's a possibility, but with me, it's a possibility, but others with me, it's different. Like, you know, I take care of myself very well. So it's like, I, to me, I don't even got herpes. I only got herpes because the doctor told me that I do. You know what I'm saying? But it's just a possibility. It's not, it's just, but it's love, bro. When somebody love you, none of that shit matters. When you really educated on herpes and what it is, none of that shit matters. But when you face with the stigma and face not knowing who you are and the capabilities that you have and how you can heal yourself and kill yourself like I did, and shit, it's going to bother you. It's going to hurt you. But that's why I love being public about it and open about it and, and helping helping people. Uh, shout out to Shayna. Um, every every Thursday she give me the... Uh, I'm able to have a Zoom call with a bunch of women who have herpes and talk to them. And um, what we do is they just... They just, you know, they talk and tell their stories and vent, whatever. But we also practice disclosing, you know what I'm saying? Different ways because it's a lot of people out here that ain't disclosed, especially in the music industry. Music industry, about 60, 70% of people with herpes, bro. Damn. Yeah, they not going to. these. I'm just the only person who's going to tell you, you know. But these these guys, these girls ain't going to tell you. But in the industry, it's accepted. Cause it is what it is. People just want some money. So people go, all these girls going from traveling with, <laughs> hopping to hopping to hopping. Hopping. They try with Who me. Who you think I they hopping to? I'm like, no, you can't. You can't fuck your way to my podcast. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> you're not gonna. You're not gonna seduce me to get on my couch, woman. Yeah. Um. It uh. It is kind of wild like that. I always remember like. Some of my rapper friends talking. Remember how Snoop Dogg made that song and he was talking about how his girl was in somebody else's music video and that girl, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, ho, what's that song? Uh, Everywhere uh, I go, uh, I see the same ho. Yeah. Yeah, with Tupac, I think it was. But uh, was it with Tupac? Yeah, I think it was. Every other city we go, every other video. Nate Dogg. Was it Nate Dogg? Yeah, yeah, that shit was crazy, but it's, it's still like that to this day, man. You see, like, one girl that's in this person's video, and then that video, and that video, and that video. It's like, bro, this girl is just out here, doesn't give a fuck. And uh, that's the reality of it. I, did you have, like, a sex addiction problem, problem being in the entertainment scene? Yeah, traveling. Like, I was, like I said, I was going state to state, different women, uh, and just moving. When you're around money, it could just come. And I'm talking about, like, we talking about bad. I start realizing like bad women, like these women with a million followers in the internet, like they be getting around, like they just hot. You know what I'm saying? Um, shit is just easy when you out there and you just don't know yourself and you could just get into something. Just losing it, bro. 
everybody losing it. Who, when the last time, whoever watching this, when the last time you in the midst of things and you about to have sex with a girl or whatever, and you actually ask her for her test results? Me? I do that shit. Beautiful. So, what, But I'm asking the people. Oh, yeah. No, that probably Like, not. come on. Like, you in the midst and you just... Nobody asked for test results. On my behalf, ain't nobody ever asked me for test results. I don't think... No woman ever asked me to see test results. Yeah. So my method is this, right? So you get it with this, the, the plastic on for like the first three or four times I hit you. Because they always call me back. Like, it's never like a one-time thing. You know how I go with it. So then after that, I'm like, look, man, I can't be wearing these condoms. So you got to go get tested before I hit it raw. And then she's like, all right, bad. So and then I'm straight. So look, though. You were supposed to ask her for test results before you even had sex with her in, in general. like Even with the protection? Yeah, you could still catch something even with... Did you give her head? Did she give you head? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to know how I caught herpes? Huh? I never had sex with the girl. Oral. Damn. Damn. Did she show signs never, that she had it? No. Oh, fuck. And this is a... You got to understand, this is a girl that I, I really like. Like, I, I wanted her for damn near like two years. She bad. You know what I'm saying? I finally got a chance. And the crazy part about it is, before I went over there, my homeboy, would, and I see it every day, my homeboy had a condom in his hand. He like, you want you want this before you go? I'm like, nah, I don't even want to have sex with her because I like her. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't just be wanting to pop, you know? And um, I made it through the whole night without having sex with her. I just woke up and start eating that mug. Like, Damn. <laughs> you know? Yeah, did know. Yeah, that sucks, so, man. And um, yeah, I, how I found out was just crazy. But um, yeah. Was she popping? Like, did she have already a network of uh, like people, or was she like kind of like in like a low key type of person or a high key person? She in the middle. She doing her thing. She not, you know. See, man, I'm learning. I'm learning every day now, man. You know she, what I said? Yeah. She doing her thing. I love that girl. She don't even know it. Shit. I'm grateful for her. Is she, if she watching? If she no, nah, if she watching this, I don't. I don't even indulge with artists. Like I try not to. I don't have sex with artists. Like I stay away from that. You got to because they gonna want me to write for them or something. Like I'm straight. Right. I'm Man. straight. I I keep it strictly business. Give me my money, and that's it. Now I will play around with women if I see they trying to play around with me, and play mind games. I play mind games with them too. Give me my money. That's it. <laughs> Give me my money. Yeah. Yeah. That's a part of this whole thing too. <sighs> you have people that it's not even just about women at the end of the day. Like everybody tries to use leverage that they think matters to you. People will tell me, I've worked with this artist, I've worked with that artist, put me on your show. And I'm always like, I know who I want on my show. Mm -hmm. Or I know who I want to work with and I do this. Like, most people already know who they want to work with in the music scene. I already know who I want to work with. So when you message me out the blue and you give me your whole catalog of what you did, who you worked with, and I respond to you with, like, maybe a business price mm -hmm. or something like that and you get upset because you think you've accomplished something... Well, guess what? I know what you've accomplished, and I know if it's going to work for me or not. Yeah, period. So why do I owe you anything? Because you've done something that doesn't apply or help me or benefit That's me. That's the thing. Don't nobody owe you that. For real. Entitlement's crazy these days. Entitlement sure. is so insane in the entertainment industry. It's literally somebody coming up to you saying, well, because I've done this, you owe me this. Or I should be able to do work with you for free or collaborate with you. And I'm looking at you like, bro, I already know who you are. I already know what you've accomplished. If I wanted to have worked with you, I would have said yes right now or I would have already hit you up earlier. Clearly, I haven't done any of those things. So why are you getting upset with me when I say no or I tell you a business price? Yeah, artists, again, they just trying to get somewhere. You know, so that's when when the people that can help them get somewhere is not working on their behalf. They get upset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I even had to check myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm going through a lot of that now, then and some, you know, even with the herpes situation. Like didn't nobody want to promote my song and talk about it. You the only one. And what, what's your ethnicity? I'm Chaldean. Chaldean. My my community, the blacks, didn't even want to support me, turn me down. About and it, herpes don't even matter. It's not even about that. It's it's really about 
the awareness and showing the off off authenticity what is it how you say it? authenticity yeah that word i'm bad with that word <laughs> but um it's really about that you know what i'm saying it's not even about the herpes so when my when when people couldn't support me at that at that moment it was just like damn and then it was just like but i didn't put so much money in these niggas pockets i'm dealing with all these emotions but then i had to center myself and be like you know what they don't owe me nothing it's their platform bro it's what they want to put on there bro it don't even yeah. it don't matter yeah you know what i mean because at the end of the day what you're offering me i don't need it yeah. so if you're offering me something i don't need you shouldn't get offended when I respond in whatever type of way where I'm declining it or maybe I'm offering, you know, some type of middle ground to what you're saying. But if you're offering me something and I'm rejecting or declining it or, you know, coming to an agreement with you on some different type of deal, you can't be offended yeah. because I might come up to you and offer you something you don't need and you be like, I don't need that. Exactly. If I don't need like, it, I don't need it at the end of the day. Like, like for real, them was like real emotions I had to deal with because I'm thinking like, you know, this is part of my music. Like, they stopping me from, you know what I'm saying? All this, <laughs> I'm like, what? But I centered myself and like, you know what? Like, this is these guys' platform. And, and uh, like, one of the guys I end up seeing in, in person. And you know what? We shook and it was all love. Because at the end of the day, it don't matter if they told me no or not. I didn't get off the phone with them. Like, what you mean no, nigga? It was, like, it was like, all right, for sure, bro. And that was it. Yeah. And then I saw one of them. And if I see another one, it's just going to be all love. That's what it is. With me, it's going to be all love. It ain't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I'm going a, I'm to a spread awareness any way I can and, and tell my story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's all I can do. Yeah, especially with music too, man. I know it's, you know, money is the key to a lot of access to things. Like if you have money, you can get a lot of access to features, a lot of placements, a lot of platforms, yeah, a lot they of turn people's my buddy pages. Down. Now, turning somebody's money down is a certain special circumstance. It takes a lot for people to say no to somebody's money because when you're talking about the music scene, there's a certain dollar amount that a lot of people always have to say yes to. Like, all right, man, this dude is willing to pay this much to be on my platform and I'll let him on. But generally speaking, to fast forward your progress in the music scene, it's going to take a lot of money because you have to pay yes. these platforms, you have to pay these artists for collaborations and features and marketing and whatnot. And if you're too prideful to use your money to market yourself or strategize like that, then it's gonna take you way longer to find success in the entertainment industry, way, way longer. Unless you wanna maybe find some viral hacks, it's possible, but even then that's just a gamble. At the end of the day, money is the access key point to progressing your career, unfortunately. It Facts. is like that. But it doesn't take money to go within and become that dream. Whatever you dreaming, you could become that. Yeah. Right now, that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm literally living my life, bro. I could die next week. I'm not gonna live my life chasing a dream. Facts, son. I can't do that. I became that dream. What make just because you got more numbers, beautiful. Can't take that away from you. You know what I'm saying? But I still make art. I'm still an artist. I still got fans that I got to attend to yeah. that love me. You know what I'm saying? And them are the ones who I keep going for because them are the ones who appreciate me. So every artist should just be in a state of just appreciate things. Be grateful. Be in a state of gratitude. You got fans out there that really love you or buy your things. And, and, and whenever you start off, get excited and this and that. Be grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these people, what happens is y'all chasing dreams, which, which is a high frequency, right? And so you get you get to that point. You never did any work. You never was really grateful. You get to that point where you think like, oh, I got millions of dollars. And then you start realizing like, I'm not happy. You know what I'm saying? I don't, because you was chasing something that you, thought you really wanted but it's Thanks. not you never was grateful in the beginning how can you be grateful in the end yeah man you know so i every artist out there understand you are doing it real life you doing it there's nothing else that you can do but just be yeah man yeah um this was an awesome talk man yeah this was a talk i think everybody needed to hear man i can't wait to see the response on this one i feel like we touched on a lot of very, very important topics, and it's really cool that you came on and you were just very transparent about everything and uh, bringing more of an awareness 
to the community, man. Is there anything you want to shout out before we hop out? Uh, man, shout out to everybody. Just everybody that's doing their thing, all the creators, um, all the listeners, all the people that just sit back and support. Um, I don't even like to use the word haters. I don't feel like they're haters. They're just people who don't agree with whatever you're saying or whatever. Shout out to y'all as well. Yeah. Um, thank y'all. I love everybody. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for being a part of this. We're at Parallel Sound Studio, High Low Visuals and Shootings Productions. We're out. Peace.